exciting part of the whole day is going over the CAS rules. So I'll try to get through these quickly, as many of you have heard them before, but feel free to reach out with any questions um, if it's unclear. First and foremost, uh, I was thinking as I was driving up here that one of the things that Chasa is doing that I haven't mentioned to this group before, because I do see some women, um, amazing women in the room, is that we have really started emphasizing a women in leadership um, group. We held our second annual women in leadership conference September 4th down in Evergreen, and it was maxed out with 200 people. And I know Haley and some of the people from the mountains did attend. And so would really encourage you just, if you're not getting any sort of communication from your athletic directors, which I mean, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, since you're sitting next to your athletic directors. Um, we put out a newsletter yesterday. We're going to do quarterly connects, um, but just an opportunity to kind of connect with some women across the state. Please reach out to, uh, to me directly, and I'd be happy to put you on um, that email blast. It's really a, a great group. Um, with that being said, I just wanted to kind of go into Chassa. Um, Chassa is a group of now 18 of us. We are located in Aurora, um, but obviously we represent about 370 schools, high schools across the state of Colorado. Um, the Chassa office are the enforcers of our bylaws, and we're gonna go over a couple of those bylaws um, today, but they're really decided upon um, based on some different levels of organization in the Chassa. So the first one um, I'll say is this ski league meeting. This is really a, a group of individuals right here in this room that talk about um, and deal with the regular season for skiing. There's also then a group of our Chassa Ski Committee, which will make playoff decisions um, and specific Chassa decisions that have to do with the state championships. And I'll mention that the group of individuals in a minute. And then we also have our Legislative Council, which is a group of 73 individuals um, made up of school board members, superintendents, principals, athletic directors across the state, and those individuals actually vote on and propose different bylaws um, twice a year in January and April. And then we also have a board of directors, so it's quite um, a different group of levels. And so I would encourage you to, for you to realize you have a voice. You can, your voice is through your athletic director, your league, the Chassa Ski League, as well as the Chassa Committee. And so if you have ideas, thoughts, questions, concerns, please reach out to us. Um, we certainly want to hear that. Um, so with that being said, I did want to just take a second to introduce the ski committee. We have one new individual, but our fearless leader is Chairperson Luke DeWolf, our AD from Steamboat. Um, we also have a newly representing Holly from Evergreen. Thank you so much, Holly, for our Nordic representative. We have Jen from Aspen. Um, we also have Bob Feraldi and Carl uh, Remsen, who are our Alpine and Nordic advisors. And then we also have um, Amy Peters from Lake County, Sean DePaula from Netherland, Brian Inman, um, who is the ADN coach from Clear Creek. So these are your representatives to the official Chesa committee. Now the committee last year had a couple major changes and these are actually pretty significant that you're probably already aware of. Last year at this meeting, we were talking about the pros and cons about splitting our state championships into a Nordic specific um, championship and an Alpine ch ch uh, specific championship and that did happen. So this will be the first year that we will be awarding a, um, a girls Nordic state champion and runner up, a boys Nordic state champion and runner up, as well as an Alpine girls state champion and runner-up and boys um, Alp Alpine state champion and runner-up. So that's pretty exciting. Um, one of the things that we talked about as a group last year is that the difficulties for schools to, um, to add skiing in general, especially when they're only able to add one discipline, there was some inequities from schools that only have one, um, one discipline when they're really trying to strive for that state championship or to compete at state. And so now I, I feel, and I think the committee feels strongly that this will be an exciting year where um, teams are on equal playing fields and there should be more opportunities for our student athletes. Um, when we split up into Alpine and Nordic, we're gonna talk about the specific state championship logistics. Um, so thank you to Kyle for hosting Nordic and thank you to Jen and Aspen for hosting Alpine in February. Um, okay, and so for any of you guys interested in watching our C committee meeting, it's open to any athletic directors and, athletic, and um, coaches. 
It's going to be a virtual meeting. It's Wednesday, March 5th, and we'll send out more information if that's what you would like to do. Um, so then the Chassler requirements. If you've coached before, you know there's some registration requirements through Chassa. It's in our school. Your athletic director inputs you as either an Alpine and or Nordic coach. You get an email to complete your registration, and then in there, this will be the rules meeting that we'll upload. Thanks to Carl for taping this. And then there's a Chassa test. You have to fulfill the concussion requirements, um, suicide and mental health every other year, first aid, CPR, et cetera. And so it's through the Our School platform. And then just a review of some, some CASA bylaws to make sure we're all on the same page. Skiing is crazy. We don't have a first official start date for practice. So each school can actually email me their start date. And I know without snow, that's typically dry land training. Um, just to give you an example, the, the, the winter sports like basketball, their first um, practice date is November 18th. It's typically your school um, is around that time, but you simply email me when your practice is gonna start. Each student athlete is required to have at least three practices. That's typically pretty easy to accomplish. Um, three practices though before they participate in a scrimmage or a contest. Um, please note one of the most common questions for skiing in particular is where can a student participate in skiing if they don't go to a school that offers skiing. And so I just wanted to take this opportunity to review state law. So state law says that if a student attends a school without a program, they can participate in either their district of attendance, so the school district where their school is physically located, or their district of residence where they actually <laughs> live. And if that does not offer skiing, which many times it will not, they can go to a school within the contiguous district or most often the next closest school that offers that program. So just a note that if you, um, if this family lives in Denver, they have a house in Frisco, they can't automatically compete for Summit County. So just putting that on your radar. If you have any questions whatsoever, I know Carl gets notified just by email in the, the Chassa Ski League by parents on where they can participate, but please send those questions to me or talk to your athletic director and we can kind of walk you through where that student may be eligible. Um, in addition, it's important to know that when you start hosting your practices, if you see students that aren't freshmen that you've never seen before, please be in contact with your athletic director because we really need to know, are they transferring, are they eligible, where are they from, et cetera. And so that's just really important to keep those lines of communication open because obviously you're not typically practicing in the high school gym. And so um, when those students come, it's really important to be in contact because if they are a transfer student and they participated somewhere last year and now they're coming to your school, there's paperwork, more paperwork that your athletic director has to fill out. Please also remember um, for practice, because I know some of you guys have middle school programs and high school programs, they can't be competing and doing the same workouts together. High school practice has to be specific to high school. There has to be a specific middle school coach, a middle school practice plan, separate, um, we say it doesn't have to be like you don't have to be on the separate entire ski mountain or race but you just have to be at different parts of, of that mountain and that facility so that you're doing totally separate things and it does it's not construed that you're practicing with the middle schoolers happy to elaborate if you guys have questions on that um, there is a Sunday contact rule Sunday contact is not allowed during the competitive season Alpine, we're gonna have another discussion on that afterwards, but currently the Sunday contact rule says that no um, contact during the regular competitive season, so that's the first day of your practice through the state championships, but you can have Sunday contact after um, the competitive season, which is probably moot um, for skiing. Also, the most important thing to remember is we do have a winter prohibition period, which says that no practices or, or races can happen between December 24th and through the 27th, as well as January 1st. Um, beginning December 28th, you can have voluntary practices, excluding those Sundays, but there's no competitions, <coughs> scrimmages, et cetera, during that time. Um, so with that being said, um, unless there's questions, I'll move on to just a brief overview of the qualifying uh, requirements for state. Um, first is Alpine to qualify, and this has not changed, to qualify for state for Alpine in a specific division, either GS and or slalom, a skier needs to be eligible and qualified. Eligible means that that student must race in at least two out of three races in that discipline. 
qualified means that in at least one race from the discipline, the, the racer must have finished in the top fourth of the starting field. Um, a skier can qualify for both disciplines. Um, and also it's important to know that there are buy to skate skiers. So as long as the students are eligible, each school is guaranteed a minimum of three skiers in each discipline for Alpine. For Nordic, it's similar, but not exactly the same. You can qualify in classic or freestyle, but you also have to be eligible and qualified. Eligible for Nordic is, again, two races in, in that discipline. The races may be an individual race or a relay. Qualified means that and for at least one state qualifier race in that uh, discipline, the racer must finish in the top 45% of the finishing field. Um, before the season begins, so probably today, you guys are, are going to agree on which races count as state qualifiers and which do not. The by the state skiers for Nordic simply says that each school is guaranteed a minimum of four skiers um, to the state tournament in each discipline as long as those athletes are eligible. The most important thing to know really is that if you have athletes missing races for any reason, um, like an outside reason, like a club race in particular, where they had to make a choice, they're not gonna be eligible for any sort of waiver at the end of the season into state. So please make sure that um, if you are having to submit a waiver at the end, it's literally just for a, a school-related activity or a documented injury. And I can tell you that over the last two to three to four years, the number of waivers that we've seen has greatly decreased because there's just not a lot of skiers that fit into that, um, that requirement these days. So again, it's their choice. The skiers need to know the schedule well in advance. They need to know their expectations of prioritizing high school and if they want to compete at the state championships, then there's these um, minimum requirements for them. With that being said, that's it that I have, Carl, um, but I'd be happy to open it up for any questions from the group. Okay, great. And then what I realized that I didn't do is we didn't even introduce anyone. So